Don't you just hate when they make you play online? (laughs) 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 Salutations and welcome to the main of our video game podcast. I'm your host, Andy Rose, and I'm joined here with Matt Samarco. Hey. And DJ Party. Hello. This is episode 45 on March 4th. 2020. Cool. Wait, three, four, tw- no, that's not anything. Nope, just some numbers. That'd be uh, cool when we get to May 4th of 2020, if we have a podcast that day. Cause Are you going to do it? Five times four is 20. Oh, I thought you were going to do the May Star the Wars thing. Yeah, that's where I was, no, that's where I was heading. I, I, was, off, I was very upset. Yeah, pretty internally. much kind of always forget about that. Nice. All right, then, yeah, whatever other dumb thing you want to do. Revenge of the Fifth, I think, is a thing, too. <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, Matt, you know we're going to do every dumb thing I want to do. <laughs> True. You've come to accept that at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, quick disclaimer. <laughs> I just, hang on, sorry. I just thought of a funny one. It could be, <laughs> may the fourth be with you. Uh, what's the? Revenge of the fifth. Revenge of the fifth. And please don't make a sith. Sixth. No? It, all right. Like, I'm gonna... So anyways, quick disclaimer. I thought it was funny. Um, cricket? It was cricket? funny. Um, so last week, we obviously didn't have an episode. It is going to be considered the lost episode 44 at this point. It was so good. We have we had such good... Uh, Matt and I had really good dynamic on that episode. Our so Dan, was Dan wasn't here last week because uh, he was sick. And we had the episode without him. And Matt and I just had like a really good conversation about what we were looking forward to most at PAX. Which not only would be irrelevant for us to post now, but <laughs> I, I sounded like I was straight up being like demonically summoned and matt was extremely echoey as if he was in a cave of sorts and i just i could not get the i don't know what it was what because yeah, i wasn't here. and he sounded like buffalo bill from sounds of the lambs which was kind of entertaining but and i didn't get the also reference creepy. which hurt matt's feelings because hmm. i've never seen silence of the lambs that's weird. really yeah that's just surprising one of those movies that just never happened yet hasn't happened yet i don't know lotion so anyways um we we aren't gonna like go back and retalk about what we already talked about on that podcast. The only thing you need to know is we were both looking forward to PAX, and then now today we're gonna talk about how great PAX was for Matt and I. Yeah, and whatever Dan wants to talk about. Yep. Yay. Um Well, all right, Dan, catch up us. Uh, catch up. Catch us up on the past two weeks. So I, I did mention on the last episode that you beat. Rise of the Tomb Raider and yeah. started Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I did. Okay. I did. Uh, oh, we're going into what I'm playing Quick now. bullet points about that. Um, uh, Shadow of the about. Tomb Raider, I actually like it a lot. Um, More? I, oh, yes. Um, I think it's mostly because it seems like Lara Croft is finally like unshackled from her, like, I have to be an adventurer. Now she's like, nope, fuck these guys. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna b- now. freaking murder them. Like, I'm getting the, the feeling of, like, Metal Gear Solid 3, like, sneaking around the jungle and, like, camouflage and, and then just brutally taking out enemies. And now she's, like, taunting them, too, so I thought that was uh, kind of neat compared to the other ones where she always seemed like, oh my god, I'm being shot at! This one, she's like, nope! I'm going to shoot you right between the eyes. Kind of like a nice character development arc. Yeah, so it it was good. But that's the way I've always perceived, like, when I saw uh, Lara Croft from the older ones, I always thought she was, like, and just, you know, a tough girl type of thing. Um, Yes. uh, um, But anyway, no, it's it's really good. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. Probably about three hours into that. Um, Unfortunately, kind of got a little sidetracked. Um, but still going back to like Call of Duty because they had the new battle pass, um, and trying to unlock the freaking weapons that they have. But it, I feel like you don't move in that battle pass. But uh, other than that, still playing. Um, and uh, back to Marvel Ultimate Alliance three, and I've been actually enjoying that uh a lot more now that I've been kind of diving into like a lot of the uh. There's like a lot of side stuff you can do. A lot of like, hey, you can upgrade this grid, or you can you can focus on unlocking these crystals, and da, 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 a lot of little stuff. Um, and then there's like challenges too. Like if you if you beat 
this enemy in under two minutes you get you know these power orbs or you get these so lots of little things to do on the side and then you have the campaign on top of that so been playing that um i tried a new game the other day um surge 2 for the first time oh god did you play through the first one i played a lot of the first one but I- I it, played a little and it just ended up this, frustrating me because it's that kind of Dark Souls. It is. A, of, it is. This is say a Pokemon side game based on Lieutenant Surge, the gym leader, or nope, nope, nope not okay. a, not even a little. I don't know not what a, this is. No, it's it. Surge one was supposed to be like a a sci-fi uh, Souls game. Like it was more about having a character that just takes like armor pieces from robots that you cut up and then he makes his own like suit. Oh, that kind of sounds neat. It is. It just wasn't... It was bland. It was, yeah. I'm looking at Matt. Going, I mean, I think they're all bland, so I'm not a good judge of these games. Um, oh, yeah. You don't like Dark Souls, Bloodborne games yeah. in general. But um, I, I thought that the, the, the map, the environment was just kind of meh. It, it didn't have anything that yeah. jumped out. So after a little while, it was just like, okay, I feel like I'm facing the same enemies the same type um yeah the first area i remember it looking a lot like, like just like a giant like trash dump just yeah, like just looks, junk everywhere yeah just it like looks it like a, look, like lived in or anything it was just like yeah i think it was like a plain graveyard or something so it was just a bunch of like pieces yeah. of tech everywhere um and you didn't get out of there for a while it, it's, it, it took a long time till you finally got like into the lab um but anyway so uh, this one i don't remember if the last one had this but you could target limbs right in the last one yes this one they something about it 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 feels really good compared to the first one so like they tightened up the controls they tightened up the controls as well as um so i don't know if either either of you have played monster hunter or a game like it where like if you aim for the tail enough you can cut it off and you can get an item from it this one it depending on like what type of armor you need so say you know like you have a really crappy helmet, but the rest of you is pretty good. If you aim at their head and you are able to like combo them and, and basically getting their health down to almost nothing. And then you hold square when they, when you're near them, you'll like cut off their head and you get material for the helmet. Um, so whatever you aim for. And then also like if you cut off an arm that's holding a weapon, there's a better chance that you'll, you'll pick up a weapon. You know, things like that. It seems like kind of counterintuitive to me. I would think the thing that you would hit would be like damaged and you wouldn't get that part. You could, No, you cut off his arm. You don't yeah. actually attack the weapon. You cut off the arm to get material. Yeah, like, but if you're if you're like attacking their head, you're really attacking their helmet, their thing that's protecting them, right? Yeah, I mean, half these games don't make sense when it comes <laughs> to like what they do with... I don't know how in Resident Evil you reload seven bullets in two. <laughs> like Resident Evil 4, he would reload like eight bullets in a shotgun but it would only be two physically going into the shotgun. So video game logic. Yay. Anyway, um, but it's kind of fun. There's a lot of uh, abilities that you can, that you unlock all the time. So you can always like switch them out. And obviously the more you play, the more you can, um, the more you can use at the same time. Um, But one thing I I really am impressed by is the blocking system. Typically in a game, you just kind of see the enemy and he swings at you or whatever. Um, This one, it gives you a slight, indication of where he is going to attack you from so you know uh left right front back whatever so you hit the block button and you push the direction that they're attacking you so if they're coming from above it's going to be pushed forward and then if you block and time it right at the same time it knocks them back and you do exponentially more damage to them um but it the the controls and everything feel really neat um compared and and much smoother than the first one from what I remember. Um, but um, yeah, no, I thought it was uh, quite impressive, um, especially when the like, coming from the first one to this one. Um, I was actually surprised too that the first one sold enough to the point where this yeah. one came out because you would th- it, it didn't seem like it sold very well, but yeah, I don't know. I can't, I can't put a figure out how well it's sold, but to make. maybe, I mean, it very well could, um, but no, it runs. It runs really, really well. And How far are you into the second one? Uh, probably about two hours. Okay. So, uh, do you have any sense of like you would need to have played the first one? Is there any sort of no. story beats that are confusing you, you, or anything? You make a custom character, which I thought was kind of neat too. Hmm. So like, it's just kind of like same world, different story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it starts off with a plane crash. 
I think that's what happened like the first time too. So hmm. um, I think they're making callbacks, but I mean, the story wasn't good enough in the first one to even care. <laughs> so Fair. it's it's more about another Dark Souls type of game with uh, new elements. Like Dark Souls never had those like random drops. It was, this is the weapon. That's it. Um, this has like, oh, this one's rare. This one's, you know, common. This is, you know, you can break this salvage down and you can put, use it towards your, your mech suit or whatever. Um, but, um, yeah, so overall enjoying that. And then, yeah, I think that's about it for now for games. Sweet. Super Matty Ice. Whoa. What's the question? What have you been playing? Oh, um, I've been playing the same stuff. I've been dabbling with Final Fantasy VII. Um, weird thing I noticed about the, the, the PS Classic version of that, every time you turn it on and load the game, you actually have to, like, it'll load up and then it'll say insert disc two. Because now that I'm on disc two of the games, it like it like makes you manually do that every time, which is kind of a weird. So what do you have to do? Queer quirk. Um, you just have to press like the reset button on the um, PlayStation console, and it'll give you an option of changing the discs. But it's just strange that it doesn't like load you automatically into that, since it's you know all on the that is weird. Chip. It's probably just because they're emulating the original port, which did use the discs yeah like it almost needs to like it doesn't know how to start without i mean that. from what i remember so the last um because you know I've, I've played ff7 so many times but i did have it on the psp back when i had a psp i don't remember if that was the pc port or the original port but i don't remember having to go through that every time hmm. yeah it's strange um they were just trying to make it be authentic i guess but usually when you have an original playstation you just have disc two in it doesn't Say, I don't know. That's yeah, weird. it just boots up automatically. That's kind of what I thought it would happen after, like the, annoying. after the first time. It's a little annoying because like you load it, you load it up and you you load your saved game and then it literally like brings you to that screen where it's like okay now you have to insert the disc. It's like well you didn't have, you didn't have to do that when it was just the first disc, which is just kind of strange. But whatever, it's not a big deal. Um, I've also been playing Crisis Core because um, I've been getting kind of wanting to get touch little every part of the Final Fantasy um, world seven world before I start playing the remake. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm not very far into it, um, but the control, like the gameplay, um, is better than I thought it would be. It's like kind of strategic. Um, it's like you're you're just one player and you don't have a team of players, but it's very kind of action focused. But it has, you know, it has materia and abilities and everything like that. Um, the storyline seem like you play as Zack, so it's set a few years before Final Fantasy VII, which is kind of interesting because you kind of learn like where does he get the Buster Sword from? Like all these like little things that kind of come into play in the main game that are really interesting background. Um, and it's set up, um, you go on these kind of missions, each of them is like, the main story missions are maybe 20, 20 minutes long, and then the, the like, you can do a bunch of side quest missions that are like five minutes long, so it's kind of a nice thing to have on the PSP to just kind of pick up and play. Um, again, I'm not, I'm only like a couple hours into it, but I'm kind of enjoying it, and excited, like it's, it, it, it looks better than I remembered it would look, like it has like really good videos and like production quality obviously it's a square square soft game but i mean it's just on this 10 year old psp system i wouldn't be surprised if PSP system. it came out as like dlc for ff7 or ported soon or something yeah i'm like really that. confused as why this isn't like why don't they just like you know they don't even have to remaster it or anything just like release it on the ps4 store i don't know how hard that is to like port a psp game i don't but, know maybe they're just planning on releasing it as dlc for the seven remake as like the prequel or something like that or maybe they have something in store who knows i mean or maybe it actually is a flashback and goes back to that yeah i mean or we, maybe it starts there we did hear that um dirge of cerberus it looks like that's starting to come up on uh i don't remember if it was like it was oh it's trademarked yeah trademark thank you dan yeah it was a trademark so it looks like they are looking at the other side games so yeah i knows? hope so it's like really interesting like that i was playing last night and there was i was a couple doing it couple missions in uh, like Wutai area so like I saw Yuffie as like a child which was kind of cool she like popped up in the storyline so there's a lot of little like easter eggs that are really cool for fans as well as this being like kind of a fun game to play so if anyone has a PSP you should definitely play this um, yeah. the game itself isn't cheap but you gotta find a PSP to play it on the game so. itself is very cheap yeah which is kind of strange I mean I guess they just made a bunch of them yeah well and, I mean it was like the game to own i feel like and it released i think very well on a, i feel like it was kind of an under the radar thing because not a lot not a ton of people had the psp i feel like it was the only good psp game i knew about well i think that was the seller oh. like i think it it was one of the initial luminous was great did first, you ever play luminous i have bit, i yeah. have that for the vita the music uh, yeah. like and you basically have to combine four it's like the tetris for psp yeah it was <laughs> like the most game i played on the psp pad upon 
It was pretty fun too. I never played that. It was. I think I played like a demo, but it was fine. Yeah. Uh, anything else you've been playing though? Um, nothing besides that. All all else I have to say is PAX related. So I don't know if we're like holding that for yeah. another segment. Yeah. So all right. So that would just be splitting it up. Here's here's what I'm thinking. I'll talk a little bit about what I've been playing for a couple weeks, and then we're gonna go into anything PAX related that. that I don't want to hear you talk for a couple of weeks, Andy. And then you and I can talk about what we experienced at PAX that isn't FF7 related. Okay. And then as a group, because Dan has also played the new demo that came out, we can just talk about everything Final Fantasy related. I like Sound it. Sound good? I like it. Sounds All right, good. then. Um, <clears throat> so in the last episode last week, I talked about how I had been playing a little bit of Resident Evil 2. Uh, Remake. Uh, the remake. I made it to the point where Ada Wong nearly murdered me with a SWAT van. Oh yeah, in the in the uh, like underground garage. I don't know why I don't remember that. Leon had to jump out of the way of it, and then Nada Wong jumped out of it. She, she was she was actually like killing, trying to attack Mister well, yeah. X, right? Because yeah. yeah, she crashed into Mister X with yeah. the uh, truck. And then you leave the police station. Yeah. Wait, was that the garage of the police station? I can't remember. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, okay. All right. So, I think I know. So you have for some no, never mind. For some strange reason, um, this kind of ties into what I was doing yesterday. Uh, so yesterday I decided to go through all of the, and I'm not even really done yet, but I went through all the video games I own. And wait I was a minute. Just, wait, hang wait, on. Hang oh, on. Okay. And um, I was just going through everything that I own, either on download or physically, that I do actually want to play through. Because there's a lot of things, like a lot of little indie games, like, oh, yeah, that's probably something I'll try someday. But it's not like anywhere near like Abzu I have for the PS4 that I got for free, stuff like that. (laughs) But there is 44 PS4 games (laughs) between download and... Um, physically owned and um, wasn't one of them was the Resident Evil 1 remake and I decided like I know I didn't finish the remake of 2 yet but it's like oh I want to I just have this inkling where I really want to go back and replay through 1 and then continue 2 I don't know why it just kind of like hit me all of a sudden Um, from what I've played of 2 so far I am really enjoying it it definitely is a different experience from playing the original as little of the originals I played being able to strafe is amazing I don't know why it took them so long <laughs> to figure that out. You would think even Resident Evil 4 would have strafing, but nope. The, they uh, did that on purpose. I know they did it on purpose, but it still yeah, s- they did it. sucked. The, his explanation was silly. He was saying it was supposed to be like scary, but it's like that's completely unrealistic. I think it's I think it's because they had really bad camera angles in the game and they couldn't do strafing added in with that like all of oh well not four but uh, no one, no two, no and three, not four. Yeah. one two and three had fixed camera angles yeah. with these weird things and i i don't they already they, people already it's struggle a certain, with the controls it's a certain charm with it so i don't think they want to add in strafing into that i think yeah. that's what had a lot to do with it, it does make it a little more scary the remaster of fi- but, uh, well they one. kept it like four and five you couldn't strafe five you couldn't strafe either five you could no you could wait 100 percent. you could not you're right yep that's why it was. I was worried that it was going to be like a. Trend. I think that was the one that broke the camel's back for me. I'm like, oh my god, it's yeah, 2009. It's... Yeah. So I that think. was really irritating. But yeah. anyway, so um, I'm gonna be playing through the Resident Evil One remake, and I'm just looking at all of the games I have. Did you start the one, of... or are you just is that your next game on the docket? Or that's that's what I'm gonna be. Uh, that and FF. I, I also have Crisis Core now because I'm borrowing it from my girlfriend. So yes. those two things are gonna be my main squeeze over the next few days. Nice. Um, I especially want to make sure Crisis Core gets done before Animal Crossing comes out because that's going to be kind of my next like handheld. Yeah, my my mind has been so like focused on Final Fantasy VII Remake that I'm forgetting that there's like a bunch of great games Doom. coming out. But for there, there's Doom, there's Animal Crossing, there's Resident Evil Three's coming out the week after those two. Oh, games. Yeah. It's like this, it's Neo Two if you're into that. It's like this. It's really starting in a couple weeks. This is going to be like fast paced. <laughs> Was that like condescending or <laughs> if you're into that? Um. Yeah, aside from uh, aside from that, I haven't been playing too much. You know, Matt and I were both at PAX for you know three days. That took up a lot of our energy, so we were doing a lot of stuff there. Um, so I don't really have too much else to say. So Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you experienced at PAX? PAX was a good time. I had a lot of fun. Um, I'll just kind of. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Um, with just like seeing all the cool indie developers, seeing even some of the AAA developers there, um, I really didn't feel like there was a, I was missing out much with Sony being gone. Um, it was actually kind of nice in a way to have that like extra force floor space. 
I've been to PAX, like, every PAX for the past, like, seven or so years. And, like, I've noticed, you know, this time more than any other time, I had, like, a little bit more room to breathe and walk around, which was just kind of personally something that was nice. Um, but as far as, like, games that I enjoyed playing, there were a couple um, that I'll just, I guess, discuss here briefly. Um, there's one called Moving Out, which was essentially, like, an overcooked, overcooked clone. But instead of having, like, four people run around cooking stuff, it's four people kind of moving out. Um, so you'll be in like a house or like, uh, they have a bunch of different levels. So there's like a, you know, a bunch of regular houses and then there'll be like a, a moving truck outside and you just have to basically get all of the, uh, pieces of the furniture out of the house onto the moving truck before the time limit comes up. Um, and it's got like, you know, just like how there's always kind of weird quirks with the, um, with overcooked, there's a bunch of weird quirks with this. Like if you're moving a bigger item, like a bed or a couch, you kind of have to, um, moved uh, together. Um, you can like throw things out the window and then they kind of mix it up like there's a haunted mansion and there's con there's like a conveyor belt level. So they kind of have some like a kind of a, just kind of the way that you uh, overcooked had like oh there was you know you could cook while you were on the trucks. So it's just kind of interesting. It's I feel like it's another game if you're someone that enjoyed that game this is you know kind of a nice fresh view of that kind of gameplay if you're kind of getting bored of just cooking stuff over and over it's with your friends it's definitely an extremely fun couch co-op game I would yeah say. exactly uh, if you just it's 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 a it's it, i mean just like overcooked it's kind of a game where you can have people that maybe don't play video games a lot or like they're just not really into it as much or maybe you don't want to start like this long tutorial this long game where like skills involved where you can just kind of play and have fun and you can really play without anyone for you know five minutes and have a good time um, the other game we'll talk about is called um, Disintegration, mm. which was kind of a game I enjoyed. I think Andy enjoyed it, and some of our other friends had a lot of fun playing I, it, too. I felt like I needed to play a little bit more of it to get the hang of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was it was definitely kind of um, confusing to control. It's kind of hard to even discuss. So it's like set in the future where um, there's like a kind of a plague that goes throughout the world, and most people are dying, and then they, they kind of put people's brains into these like cybernetic suits. So you're basically like a robot with your brain... Um, or your, I don't even know if it's your brain, but your consciousness is in this robot suit. Um, and there's kind of like a faction that kind of turns evil. And, you know, you gotta, you're basically kind of the ragtag team trying to like fight against this evil corporation. That's what it seems like uh, to me. They only really let us t see more um, the multiplayer. You can play like a, you know, a five, 10 minute demo. Um, it was a 5v5 yeah, five five multiplayer. I almost wasn't certain if there was a campaign or if that just was yes. the game. It so was kind of a skirmish it's almost. It's kind of strange because there's a campaign mode, which sounds like it would be interesting, but they they didn't say anything about it. And the game is supposed to come out like either spring or Q2 of 2020, which I at this point they've released so little on that, um, at least when I looked up online and um, what I saw at PAX. I, I would be surprised if this game wasn't delayed until you know, the second half of 2020 or maybe even into 2021. Yeah. Um, but that being said, the, the, we did play a couple of rounds of the 5v5 multiplayer, and it was kind of a blast. It was a, it was a, one of the things that kind of made it so interesting was how unique it is. It's not a game I think anyone's really ever played before. It's, it's kind of, so you're in this first-person mode um, where you're actually controlling a ship, and it's got different... Um, and they, they, there's a few different game modes, and they had us playing Domination, so there's three points, and you kind of have to hold the points that you want to. Um, so you're in this ship, there's like nine different ships that you can choose between, and they all have different abilities. Um, they play, they kind of control pretty differently. Like there's the tanky ones, there's the faster ones, there's um, there's support ones that can heal your teammates. Um, there's guys that have missiles. You can you can do all sorts of different things depending on, it seems, what, um, what kind of uh, the classes you're using. Um, and then you'll also have, you know, it looks like three or four, um, like, footmen that are kind of working underneath you and they kind of follow you around and you can actually kind of point where they go um, and use abilities so if you're you know if you're if you're at a point that you need to control for the domination you would you know point here um, on the ground near there and it would all the all your like three three or four soldiers would run over there and you can also use them to attack the other ships the other players and then you can um, like use special abilities for them um, and just the way that it controls it's kind of um, it's it's you can go you know up down left to right 180 degrees um, to an extent you can't just like fly up over the battlefield it's only like a certain amount that you can go up um, the, the couple maps we did were kind of like canyon it was like a canyon level so it's kind of um, you know a tight cor tight quarters but um, just the way it played and field was very nice and unique. I don't know. Do you have anything to say on that particular game? Because I know I thought we it was it a, a little. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the right term for it is. Um, kind of sensory overload with the game. Like you know, my troops would die, and I would really wouldn't even be aware of it because you know I, I'm this ship that's shooting at other ships and other ground troops, and 
you know, trying to win that way. But then I won't notice that my own ground troops are dead. And then the way to get them back is to go all the way to the ground. But if you're caught on like a little bit of graphics, you won't go all the way to the ground. Yeah, I had that. And problem that's how too. you summon them. And I don't know. It, it seemed a little overwhelming and maybe it would be less overwhelming like you played it a few times right? yeah i played it a few times it got easier it, it is definitely complicated and i still didn't get the hang of like how because apparently your troops have different abilities that you can use i didn't get really get a hang of like how you could use them what the what the reset timer on their um on their um like spawning was or what the reset timer on their abilities was um so it was a lot of just kind of like praying and spraying um but luckily you know everyone there was kind of new so i don't think it was that much of an issue uh i'm imagining and hoping that when the game comes out it'll be you know there'll be like a nice tutorial in there i'm usually one i think this I, this is kind of something that i do differently than you is usually i'll play through the single player campaign just so i kind of get a feel of how the game plays so i know when you play call of duty you just usually skip that but i like to do it just so i can kind of get That's a refresher on the controls specific to military shooters though what do you mean? Just like the like, I don't do that with every oh, okay. game type. Yeah. That's, that's specific to military shooters, where it's like, I I just know that I'm not gonna be like their their story is not gonna change my life in any way. Mm. Yeah. So it, it's it's a good point. It's something that we'll have to wait and see when the game comes out to see if it is kind of too much going on, or if it's like, do the troops actually you know make a certain amount of um, are they worth kind of you know using their skills like are they actually going to help you really be like a big deciding factor or not because i know when we played it was more about just like the ship on ship battle yeah. and then have the troops kind of um gain the control points that was pretty much what i was doing um worked out what was the name of the cute little game with the robots with the two legs uh, that was a fun one i thought it was like bio bipod or something bipod biopod that sounds about right um it's this kind of like um reminds me of something like snipper clips where it's like a co-op uh it you, you're two different little robots who have two feet slash two hands like they act as both and you could go around solving puzzles and grabbing things but the thing is each trigger controls a leg and that's how you walk like by pulling down the right trigger your leg arm reaches out and then if you let go it stomps to the ground so you're like walking with it but also using the legs i'm doing a lot of motions here that dan's looking at but you guys can't see <laughs> you're using the legs to kind of like clamp onto things and solve puzzles and stuff like that so it's like uh, it reminded me a lot of stipper clips where you're both trying to work together to solve uh yeah, it's another good. Common yeah, it was, a, it was definitely a good. Like, reminded was, me a lot of Astrobot too, just kind of because they're like little cute little robots. Um, yeah, the robots and the kind of the perspective is very Astrobotty. Yeah, um, but it's it is definitely a, looks like a fun, interesting game that would be fun to play coach co-op. I was playing, you know, with a, a friend of mine, and we were just kind of having a blast, kind of because you got to do a lot of working together. Where you know they're you know sawing an, uh, with an axe to cut a piece of wood, and then you have to take that yeah. wood off the conveyor belt and throw it into you know the goal and then you'll you'll unlock yeah. the door so it's a lot of like kind of coordinating doing different things at the same time to help each other out um i had yeah, a, definitely fun yeah i have so many little things from packs here like so many little cards i have a card for that one somewhere i just don't know where it went um another thing i i did i, I told matt about this is i uh, pre-registered for a phone game called a uh, sand ship uh it seems like kind of like a uh, puzzle phone game um i'm hoping it's going to be one of those ones where it's like oh here it's like a few bucks and it's like a full game uh looked really cool uh, I didn't get to try it, unfortunately, but it seems kind of like a, um, reminded me a little for some reason of the pipe game from Bioshock you used to, uh, hack into things a little bit. Um, it's, it's not that, it's not the water pipe thing, but it's like you're moving around a bunch of blocks and trying to solve puzzles that way. Yeah, it almost looks like from the screenshots, like Factorio. I don't know if you ever played that, that I PC game where you're like making a factory. I do um, not. But I haven't played that either, but it's just like from the screenshots, it looks like you're like building a factory, um, kind of upgrading it. Uh, other more efficient. Other indie games fun, that looked really cool thing. were um, Raji, R-A-J-I. Um, a lot of these I wasn't able to actually play, but I'm like, oh, I need to grab that card and just look out for the game. Uh, Raji stars this um, uh, kind of like a uh, Eastern Indian person. Uh, it was kind of a uh, kind of like a I would say kind of like a Assassin's Creed esque type game. Uh, another one was um. I don't even know how to pronounce this one. Mm. Maquette, M-A-Q-U-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Its tagline is Navigate Memories by Exploring Worlds Within Worlds Filled with Awe-Inspiring Architecture and Imaginative Puzzles. And you know how uh, I am for puzzle games, so I definitely grabbed a card for that. Mm. Um, the Pathless seemed pretty cool. I, I just... Uh, a lot of games I'm uh, 
stricken to because of the art style overall. And this one had a very nice kind of cell shaded art style. It's like kind of like a Zelda esque adventure game. And you have this like little bird friend that helps you out. Uh, the pathless is a mystic adventure game about an archer and an eagle in a vast forest. Uh, Cloud Punk was one that um, Matt and I tried together. Um, you're in this kind of wasn't really. Uh, it was like top-down perspective world, uh, a cyberpunk world where you could fly around this little ship, and uh, you were kind of like a delivery person almost. Yeah. <laughs> and it had a very cool like aesthetic. It looked yeah. really cool, like that. Like you were saying, that futuristic cyberpunk. The but... only thing was weird is as soon as you land, it's a fixed camera perspective, which I thought was really weird. Whereas yeah. when you're in the ship, it's like 360 degrees. Um, aside from FF7, the major game. Like the AAA title that I got to try was Animal Crossing New Horizon. And I will say that from what I played, the game is exactly what I was thought it was going to be slash hoping it was going to be. The issue I had was the demo was bad because they forced me to play with like three other people. Yeah, I felt so bad that for you. I didn't want to play with. Besides Final Fantasy VII, that seemed like the thing you were looking forward to the most. And it was a pain to even get in for the demos. Like we, we arrived... First thing in the morning, like specifically an hour, for Animal Crossing. Yeah, like an hour and a half before the uh, convention started, and we st- you were you kind of walked straight beeline to the booth, and you still couldn't get yeah. like get your spot. I had to sign up online, and the uh, times were gone within thirty seconds of them being open. Or yeah, because like I, I was trying to get the app at the same time as Andy was right next to him, and my my phone was kind of slowing down. I think maybe because the site was being hit so hard, but I literally entered at 501 and it was already sold out for the whole yeah. for the next day they kind of did what um pokemon sun and moon did for the hm moves where um so uh, what i mean by that is in in sun and moon they took the hm moves such as like surf and cut and rather than having to waste a move spot on your pokemon to teach him that task you could just like blow a whistle and a charizard will come to fly you somewhere it was like just really simple really easy thing they did similar here um so in animal crossing one of the biggest hurdles was if there was like a little cliff or a river you'd have to go all the way around the island to get around now they give Ugh. you this stick that extends and you can hop across the river with it and they give you a little ladder you can use to get up those cliffs it was just like those two little things where it's like hey that's a three minute five minute problem that's now solved for me instantly yeah nice quality of life thing and um they, they let you build bridges at some point too right they let you they it, they let you like roller coaster tycoon the map, <laughs> which I am looking Sweet. forward to. You get to like basically make it look however you want it to look. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, the issue I had with doing the demo in in co op mode is only one person is the leader, and that only the leader can pick up things and do things. It's like what the point of co op is you can visit your friends' islands, but these people weren't my friends, and I don't care about oh, <laughs> where man. I was at the time. Like my friend Sydney is also getting the game, and we're planning on visiting each other's islands and like having fun and everything like that. But I don't care if it's like strangers. Um, the other thing they did was in the 3DS game, all of the shop, this is why I didn't like the 3DS game, all of the shops were on a separate island, and it was like a loading screen to go back and forth. Now it's back to how it originally was, where everything's just on the main island. Uh, but yeah, it's it, like I said, I'm really looking forward to the game. The entirety of the line, every time I saw it, was a mixture of all ages and all genders, by the way. So hmm. I am not the only 30-something-year-old <laughs> man that's very excited to play Animal Crossing. True, fair. Just fair. because you guys aren't. Um, now, with all of that PAX talk out of the way... Oh, also, Matt and I played some really cool board games. So we did. That, that was a thing. Um, we played one of those Unlocked... Was it Unlocked or Escape? It was Exit. It, which is kind of like an Escape the Room in a Box kind of like puzzle adventure game. You have to unlock! Um, that, they so that, make you, that they make you cut up, so you have to buy another one. Uh, so yeah, no, PAX, PAX was an amazing time, though. The only thing I need to do differently next year is get more sleep each night. That was my downfall hmm. this year, um, and it really, uh, really hindered me. Oh, I got a little Squirtle. Stuffed animal. Ash, uh, my girlfriend and I, uh, I got her a Charmander and me a Squirtle. So that was really cute. Nice. Um, now, for Final Fantasy VII. Now, I think it would be good, before we all talk about our reactions to the demo and everything that's come out, I think it would be good to point out what Matt and I played at PAX a couple days before this demo dropped. Yes, uh, two days ago? Yeah. Um, Monday. It was mostly the same. Yes. As far as like they didn't add, they added like one new ability, but the the biggest difference was the amount of time you played the game. Um, so Matt and I, and this is if you're not familiar with the opening bombing mission in FF Seven, it's like that's really the only thing this deals with. But it was for for Matt and I, it was really just like the boss battle, really. That's yeah, it. and um, a few fights before that. Whereas this demo was pretty much the entirety of that first reactor bombing, and, and that was the huge scathing difference. Um. 
So I guess, um, do you guys want to each each of us give our initial thoughts, or how, how do you want to play this out? Let's just talk about it. How'd you like it? Oh my <laughs> god! I love it so much. Just, I, I find it hard-pressed to find something I hate about it. Yeah, it was really I'm good. Bi- like- this is a biased opinion. I'm, I'm pointing that out right now. This is a biased opinion from a person who grew up with the game, who's very nostalgic about the game, but wow. This is coming from someone where I didn't like the battle mode in FF15. I didn't. I agree with this, you there. I didn't like. The I liked. I liked mode. this battle battle mode. I did not feel like it was just a hack and slash. Yeah, I it really, it really marries it. the kind of like turn based and the action. Like it's you're not sitting there doing nothing, but it's you know the more times I played the demo, like I played it a few times at PAX and I played it at home. Um, you realize how like the regular attack isn't really the point of any of the fights. Like it's not going to do anything for you. What the regular kind of pressing square button does for you is just kind of. Um, get up their stagger bar so that you can stagger them or it gets up um, your ATB gauge so you can use spells and um, abilities that use up like the it, ATB gauge. Square works pretty good on the smaller enemies though without really any... Yeah, the first ones, but I'm I'm imagining as they, like the game gets further and further along, it'll be even less useful as far as just killing those basic item, uh, enemies. Like even near the end of the demo, it was kind of, you know, I had to get them to stagger or use my ATB yeah. gauges a lot. I feel bad because we haven't heard from Dan while we were talking about PAX. So Dan, why don't you tell us some of your thoughts on FF7? Uh, no, the uh, see, unlike these two gentlemen, I never went back to play the Final Fantasy VII. I wanted to experience it, um, you know, from memory. And then, uh, you know, there was some some moments like that, that kind of wow, like when you first see the... Well, also, what threw me for a loop, I, Mako... It's pronounced Mako. Well, all right. So in Japan, they don't I really have Mako. the. I Mako. That was that was a little disappointing. <laughs> so in, in uh, Japan, and I guess this is just the issue with not having voice acting in the original game. Japan, when they just have an A like that, it's an ah sound. Ah. Okay. They also went back to the like the official Aerith is now her name. So it's they they, well, they, they did that after the first game though. That that the, the original game was the only game to ever do that. Yeah, in in the U.S. version though. So that is like entirely yeah. retconned to be Aerith now. Yeah, because they they even switched it to Aerith and Advent Children in yeah. Crisis Core. So so that's official. Oh, that's been official since two thousand three. I didn't remember from Crisis Core because I still haven't gotten to her and I don't. Yeah, I'm just making assumptions. Okay, because yeah, I don't know. Maybe it isn't. Yeah, uh, maybe Ad- she isn't Advent Children was the Core. next piece of media, I believe, that came out after the original game that had her in it, and it was Aerith hmm. correctly. And I was confused until I realized, oh no, the original English dub was dumb. Go on, Dan. Um. Anyway, so no, the game was very, very impressive. They they nailed a lot of the key moments that they needed from the beginning, uh, like him hopping off the train. Um, yeah. The moment, like I said, he sees the reactor core and it like pans up. Um, that was right out of the original. That game. was fantastic. That was, that yeah. And then was, the like box box cover with like the, sh- the Shinra, like right above him. Oh, absolutely. Stuff. It was gr- the, the way they updated the characters, like the first, you know, a uh, few enemies that you fight, like those, I remember seeing like fighting those guys, um, yeah, definitely. You know, had when like I a... first played it, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like the the jump is amazing. The only closest game I have to like a giant reboot, like seeing it like completely different, was in Metal Gear Solid Four when you go back to Shadow Moses. Oh yeah, that was and cool. it's so detailed, and you see, you know, you see Rex. So what? What about Resident Evil Two? Oh right, right, Resident Evil Two. Uh, the comp- didn't even think of that. I don't even know why. Um, well, Resident Evil 2, when I was a kid, that, that wasn't, like, my favorite. That was just something I liked. So this one, it was just, like, awesome. But Final Fantasy VII was was special to me, and Final and uh, Metal Gear Solid was obviously my favorite. So when that moment, I was, you know, kind of your situation with this game. It was jaw-dropping. I also didn't know what was happening in the game. Yeah, I... Speaking of not happening, did... This was a surprise that this demo dropped, right? Yeah. Although I heard Spawnwave say that it was seen kind of deep in the coding of the story yeah, about was, a month ago. There was a leak that people had seen that there was a demo, yeah. but they didn't really man- mention anything until Monday. They just dropped it. I figured they'd wait at least a week for those people that, you know, got to play it. PAX isn't really a big enough event for them to do that. Like E3, I can see them maybe waiting a little bit this time. But I mean, PAX East isn't really known for having... Yeah, but I mean, you waited, you know, in line for a long... Not really. 
Actually, uh, that's something we should point out is that uh, Square Enix did something that no other vendor at any convention I've ever been to has, has done. They did the demo correctly. So with things like Animal Crossing, if you didn't get that right away, the line was capped. And that's that's it. You have to like kind of wait around to see if maybe it gets uncapped or whatever. And that's how convention lines are. That's why I really don't go for the AAA title lines usually. Final Fantasy VII, which Matt and I originally thought was going to be a shit show, was way better. We, you didn't even have to run because they didn't run out of tickets for like a half an hour. So you just went straight to the Square Enix booth and they handed you a ticket. The ticket had a time frame to come back for. And that was it. We got to the time frame. The demo, they limited the demo to only 20 minutes to make sure people... It was 20 minutes or until you beat the boss. Yeah. And so they had people, you know, they would have the waves moving very well. And Matt and I only had to wait maximum, I would say, a half an hour. Yeah. I would say. No yeah, more than 45. that. And then... It, it was fine. It was great. I I didn't have to wait in line at all, really. So kudos to Square Enix for actually cracking the code on convention demo line waiting, Dan. Um. Anyway, so no, the combat was fantastic. Um. It, it like I said, I, I think they took what fifteen had and they just they made it that much better. Um. It's 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 a lot more polished, and I also feel like when you get good at it, you can really make like almost look like your character is dancing while fighting. Yeah, it definitely um, seems like a skilled game. Like yes, I, I yeah. remember one time I got attacked, and then I immediately went into using an ability like uh, like Braver or something, and Cloud actually like flipped backwards, and then atta- it was like this really cool kind of acrobatic kind of thing that he did. Yeah, it, which it's, just seemed really. But not everything is automatic because I used the um. No, what it, it was automatic. I used one of Cloud's. Uh, special abilities not braver but he had another one like Cross slash was that it? no it was the one where he like uh oh, surged yeah. in and you can miss the target with certain things so you do have to be careful there are some really? that you yeah, only I missed want with a bunch of stuff so braver was kind of an automatic hit but the other one where you kind of lunged in with the sword and i think there was one where barrett it was something similar or something like that so you do want to if you're going to use energy on those attacks you do want to make sure that they're staggered first um or I, at I, least you're good at aiming so you both of you have played FF15 a little more recently. What were the key differences between the two battle systems? Jesus, I don't need, FF15 was kind of a crap show. Like you just it was a, it was a lot yeah, more but, spammy. It was a lot more like you didn't really know how to, you know, build up like you, when you used magic, you had you had to find magic in the in the world. That was so, irritating. So I never really used magic because yes. I like you couldn't use it because you, you could you know draw a bunch of magic from like this fire plant or whatever the yeah. heck it is, and then use it all in you know two uses of fire. So it's like you would never use them because you were always saving them for some like it wasn't based on magic or anything, magic points. So it was just it was just kind of dumb. You ended up just kind of pressing square a lot and then using what I think there was like a special powerful move that you could use. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, it it, it was the, repetitive. The moving and boring. around and the the hitting the enemy was is identical. Like that is the same. But again, the the thing with the MP is once you use it, it's gone. Like and then you have to do things to get it back. I like the fact that with Final Fantasy VII, it automatically comes back. But you just have to either survive long enough or you have to be able be good at dodging. Um, and I like the fact that finally you can dodge something completely like they were coming at me and they would miss. Yeah, you can um, dodge. You can. Block. I mean, if they did like a special move or something that like the homing missiles or something from that like final boss. Yeah, thing. I had a lot of I didn't I, I wasn't able I was still like taking damage whenever I tried to dodge. And uh, I mean, blocking only reduces damage. But whatever I tried to dodge, maybe it was because I was really only using it against the boss. Yeah, I had some trouble with it too. Yeah, the but boss, I think... the boss, pretty much hit you on. Because I wasn't like, really using it with the regular enemies because I was taking oh. them out so quickly. Oh, I was having fun rolling behind them, and I believe yeah. I believe when you roll behind them, they do like you do more damage or something when you hit them in the back. Um, yeah, it has another cool feature that they didn't have when we were playing at PAX, where there's like every character has a special ability where you press triangle. So for Barrett, it's, oh, like, yeah. it's kind of this overcharged missile shot that does a lot more damage, and then it recharges either by you know just like a certain amount of time, or you can press triangle again and it'll like it'll take a second, but it'll charge up a bunch of the bar at once. And then Cloud has he can kind of switch between two kind of um, Ooh, battle I like styles. Yeah, that was yeah. that was nice. So a nice has, switch. Yeah, so he has this like regular mo- uh, mode that you know is kind of fast and nimble and does a good amount of damage and then he has this other mode where you get like really slow 
but you get you know it feels like almost it's almost like tightens up yeah like, you get you get like almost twice as more powerful and your your and I think your weapon you feels much more deliberate and it feels just block. heavier and i also yeah. read yeah. no you can't block ranged I thought you couldn't block at no, all. No, you could block, and I read something. I, I yeah, I when, you read, when you block, you, when you do like an automatic counterattack. Tool yeah, in that, in that mode, which is cool. Yeah, but that's only um, and they're gonna, when they're like physically there. If they're a range attack, you can't block it at all. That's I just think it's downer. cool. Like we only okay. got to play with those two characters, and those are such different kind of special abilities. And they're gonna presumably have one of those for every. Character. So we'll have a new one for Ares. We'll have a new one for Tifa. Which yeah, is really, it's really. Like, it's gonna feel really amazing when you have, and and the game is never gonna be boring because i i feel like if you just get bored of playing as cloud like hack and slash you just switch to like a mage person so yeah at that point you if you want to play as a hack and slash you could play this game as a hack and slash if you want to play this game as a mage like or or put like almost or like a basically or a shooter well, or not, whatever yeah um it, i mean it's it it's also tough to, it's tough to play it at range because i was having a hard time well, aiming at barrett, what i wanted kinda... with barrett um but well if you aim close enough to an enemy it locks on and you can press well, yeah, but if uh, if a lot of them are really close together, oh yeah, uh, that's what I'm saying. I wish there was like a lock if, on, and you could switch between the targets. It, and not only that, like when I was aiming at like a turret, and then that stupid little flower thing would cut yeah. by me, yeah. I would I would switch to that, and it's like ah. Then it's um, like you try to pay attention to the flowers, but that turret still it's still shooting, shooting you and hitting you, you. So I was constantly like going like what i want to heal no i'm getting yeah, hit and i do really like the way they managed the like having multiple characters because you're controlling a guy and like you said you can kind of switch at the whim kind of instantly and you can also if you're fighting a guy and you notice you know if you're playing as cloud and then barrett has a bunch of atb gauges built up um well there's one or two you can just like press shortcuts to kind of give him commands and keep playing as cloud oh, yeah i was con during the boss battle i was constantly switching between the two yes. because i knew the other yeah. one would automatically have the uh and so that it's the gauge that was in um uh, FF7, but in that, it was just this, like, one line that went on a time. Now it fills up when you do normal attacks. I don't know if it fills up just over time regularly. I think, I think it does. Just, I just much think, more slowly. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think when you hit someone, it did increases even faster. Because, yeah. again, they want you to engage. The only difference, the only... That ADP dictates everything, though. You using kind of like in the original game, you using an item, you, you doing an attack, you doing a special attack, you doing magic. But magic also drains MP. Still, like, so yeah. you have the two. And it, it kind of makes this kind of, uh, a, like, a unique play style where, if, say, you have a, not a lot of health left, you have to be aggressive because you, say, you don't have any ATB gauge filled up. You're like, all right, I got to build up this ATB gauge really fast. And instead of getting defensive and, like, you know, hiding from them, you're actually probably better off getting really super, super hyper aggressive, which is just kind of like a, a really interesting way to do kind of you know, healing or like defensive st strategy. It just, there's, uh, there's so many things going on with the different items that you use and the different, you know, the two or three different gauges that you have going on at all times that like, it's really, it's like a fighting style I've never really seen before, which is really cool. It, it just, it, it's impressive. Cause like I said, I, I you're never going to get bored of one character. I don't know how many you find in Midgar from the original. Cause I saw red well, 13 yeah, there the, and I was the, like, do you find red 13? You do. You find him in the Shinra tower. Oh, okay. So that's really so. Basically. There's presumably going to be five characters. Tifa. We have a poster here yeah. that we got for free from the uh, Square Enix booth. So um, it should be Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, Ares, and Red Thirteen. God, I don't you don't. Play you don't. Yeah. Aerith, just knowing. <laughs> well, she's. <laughs> well, she'll be fine Unless, for the first. Of course, for the first well, can game. Can you imagine what happens if they don't kill her? Oh my God! There would be revolts. I don't think they cannot kill her. I think that I do. I they kill Tifa instead. <gasps> oh my god whoever you talk to the most you go on a date with a gold saucer whoever you talk to the least gets murdered <laughs> oh by <God>. sephiroth <laughs> i feel like that's too core to the story for them to change yeah, but no. i almost do wish they would just like tweak one or two big things to kind of like you know make if, it really uh, different in that way like the storyline but i don't know what they would do that how they could do that without upsetting everyone find a twin sister <laughs> that just sounds like like a sitcom cop out you mean like Big Boss? <laughs> yes. Uh, we, uh, you know what? We're going to go in less. No. Um, but, uh, oh, okay. And, and it is cool that they have like, so there's, you know, at the beginning of the game, there's, you're starting off, it's, you know, it's Barrett and Cloud, and then there's like Biggs and Wedge and everything. And they're, it seems like they're really fleshing out those secondary characters that only have a few lines in the first game, which is kind of cool. Someone that's like played the game uh, so many times to see kind of really these characters kind of grow and have more time, like more space and uh, time to be really learn about them and their background is pretty interesting. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was quite neat to see Wedge like actually have a voice. Um, Not to mention, um, it was nice to hear the side characters talking 
yeah. to each other. Um, also, can we talk about the music? Oh, my oh God. fantastic. I was immediately looking for a Final Fantasy VII theme with the music. Yeah, I almost don't want to like. Isn't listen there to a this. free there's theme? A, there's going. There's a free one, I guess, if you own Final Fantasy fourteen and you you own Final Fantasy seven, like the the oh, new one coming out. Wait a minute, because I have a Final Fantasy seven theme for the PS4. Was that just because I owned FF seven? I don't know. Maybe that might be free, but oh. I want. Those, it's good. It's got I like want, just the original like general song yeah from but the I, I want I, I would like one of the new ones um and you guys are talking about the playstation like home theme not just like not just a music theme yeah i was talking about the playstation home yeah. theme which has yeah. music to yeah. it yeah yeah which means it's one of those like th- special theme ones it's not just a screenshot like you can put a screenshot oh yeah anything. no this this was a nice one i've had it i've had it equipped for like a year and a half now speaking of that have they said whether this game has a photo mode um, I'm not Th- like, sure. Like, this would be a fun game. What do you mean a photo mode? You never heard photo mode? Photo mode, like, t- basically it wipes away everything on the, on the heads-up oh, display. You oh, could do it in uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. You could do it in a lot of the games. It's basically, like, showing off, like, the graphics. And I feel like this is a game where, you know, it, just every certain angle and There things... were certain moments where I noticed the graphics lacking. Really? Specifically, and it was the same moment. I don't know if it's just because I saw it the first time I played and I couldn't unsee it every other time, but when he's planting the bomb on the thing, there's this, like, wheel there. Like a uh, steam valve. No, yeah, valve, yeah. It was very low poly, and it was noticed to me. I noticed it immediately every single time because for some reason I always pick up whether a circle is a circle or if it's some type of (laughs) octagon. I don't know why I'm just like programmed to do that, but I noticed that every time majority of graphically, it was amazing. Um, when Matt and I were in line for the demo, they had up on this wall, a bunch of the, uh, the, uh, screenshots. No, uh, storyboard art mm. for the game. That was really cool. And no, it, I mean, it looks fantastic. That's, that's a very small kind of like, um, Dan, you were complaining to me yesterday that you can't jump in the game. That's like a very small, that, I had that same reaction. Thing. Cause like you're playing well, it you and it feels X. like such a, it feels like such a modern game and you expect yeah. to be able to jump. Um, even though there was really no need to jump. And no, there is. And the fact that you can dodge roll at any time, I just, I hate being stuck to the ground. I was, I was talking to Andy about this yesterday. I, I, I'm not a fan of games where you're just completely stuck to the ground and you can't do anything. Like maybe you can leap forward a little bit, but I, I love the fact that you can leave your feet. You can roll yeah. like, completely. So, um, yeah, because like I said, at that point, the beginning part of the game felt like I was playing a hack and slash, which I love hack and slash. So I can just imagine that Tifa is gonna be a fucking brawler. You're just gonna yeah, walk I up and beat the with her. shit out I bet of. She's gonna be so much people. fun. But a- Aerith, see, that's actually the most disappointing. She's gonna be like a like a. I bet she's gonna be like a fighter slash dancer the way that she plays. That's what oh I'm yeah, well she's for. gonna be and bouncing around the whole. She's gonna be like Eddie Gordo, just kind of like kicking around. Yeah, <laughs> I want it to be like, like upside down spin yeah. kick. Like I want it to be like the scene in Advent Children when you're fighting with her, or you see her fight in the church, and she's just like it's it's almost like Superman punches yeah. that happen. Um, it did. Speaking of the jumping, it did remind me a lot of uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time, where I could roll everywhere but couldn't jump, and I feel like I should have been able to. That's why I was so excited that Breath of the Wild added a jump because I like just jumping. When I think oh, we yeah. all have the same. Yeah, yeah. Now, thing. granted, they did limit the controls at the very beginning, so who's to say later that you can't when you get into because because that was like you're in battle mode. See, you I, never. I, the thing is, I don't think there's a reason to jump in the game. Is the thing though like no, but they might yeah yeah because there is like a part where you have to jump over a turnstile and you just like jump you just press close to it and there'll be like an arrow and as soon as you touch it it'll just automatically yeah. jump you over the it turnstile. was probably also just since they do have some linear paths over the rails to stop people from accidentally jumping over the rail yeah or like just like breaking the environment and going places yeah you're not supposed to. um one other notable this is just a minute detail, but it did annoy me, is that, you know, they had those Shinra boxes everywhere that you could break up. Yeah, there was a lot of destructible environments, slash which it, was really cool. But you can't just keep slashing. He would slash, take his time, put the sword back. No, oh, Slash yeah. again. Take his time, put the sword back. But when you're in battle mode, you can just slash, 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 slash. I yeah, wish it was like that. You're very limited when you're not in battle mode. That. I don't know why, yeah. where, like, you'll swing, and then you'll keep your sword out for one second, and then he'll put it back. So like, yeah. I want the sword out. Yeah, like, it's, just, it's just funny. They restrict when you're when you're not in battle mode. Like, you can only do those basic attacks, and then you can, you can you know, use uh, magic and, and, like, items to cure yourself without using up ATB gauges, um, which is nice. But, yeah, it's kind of limited in the way that you're uh, moving. Not to keep putting this back to Zelda, 
but it is me. Um, one of the things I loved going from a game like Ocarina of Time, I can't remember if Wind Waker did it, so I'm going to say Ocarina of Time to Twilight Princess was an Ocarina of Time, when you hit the slash button, you're always pulling it out of your hilt, and then you kind of keep it in hand. I loved in Twilight Princess when you'd be walking and you could walk. Oh, that was it. If, if I hit the sword button in Ocarina of Time, I would stop walking and slash forward. But in Twilight Princess, he'd be walking and you could pull your sword out of your... Mm. Um, unsheathed hilt, it, yeah. Unsheathed it. Um, no, the hilt is part of the sword. Yeah. There's unsheath. A, there's a name for the sheath when it comes to a sword, though. It's not a sheath. The hilt know. is the handle. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, no, no, I know. Anyways, um, no, I love that you can like walk and pull out the sword at the same time, but this game kind of has that other part where it's like as soon as you hit that you stop and slash instead but again yeah. that's just like a very dumb dumb minor thing like i'm struggling to find things i disliked about this demo yeah for sure and like what was the secret ending that we it's all not got? really a secret it was just at the at the end you can make a decision of how much time you want on the bomb whether it's 20 minutes or 30 minutes i mean does it either- change anything if you do 30 minutes yeah it- 30 minutes you don't get the one extra scene of just Seth, like the trailer Seth, at the end the fi- yeah the famous, oh the trailer well no no it's the the trailer happens no matter what it's the te- uh, sephiroth turning around around the, the fire the iconic scene oh you don't get that you don't get that like how cloud pick, like grabs his weird. head yeah i picked 20 minutes because i'm not a little bitch and because True. wow it, it was 20 minutes in the original game and i thought like oh that's neat i don't know why they let me pick maybe some people are and it was were, it was plenty i was kind of i was still getting it trying to get every chest yeah. and everything and i still beat yeah. it with like 12 minutes left yeah. so wondering like, if it's going to be the same in the demo and there were three were there three difficulties you could choose from i yes. didn't really there was like classic a, there was classic what's easy classic? and normal essentially it's like watching the game and react it's classic it. but you just you just do your act like you don't you're not pressing square to attack you're just like kind of it's doing that automatically and you're just picking like the spells and and special moves oh, so that's kind of the turn base they talked about yeah, going exactly. back to i actually i'm fine with this battle system i don't need that yeah me too oh i love it yep yeah no, um another thing i liked was just kind of like they really seamlessly went into cinematics and battles and oh, battles yeah. really well like at the end of a battle in the final fantasy 7 original obviously it would go to that screen and like here's your experience here's the items you earned but in oh here, my you'll, god yeah you'll, yeah so it kind of <laughs> it, it kind of slows it down a little but here it'll just like as soon as you finish that last bo- boss or actually every time you fight a guy a uh, complete a guy it'll give you like okay you got this much experience this much guild these this item oh yeah uh, pops cloud up. leveled up to level eight or whatever it just pops up on the side like not totally in your way yeah. and then you can just kind of move on to the next part don't worry it's missing a little bit of the, the the i'm sure they're going to have some sort of little victory song well if uh the one of the things matt and i saw in the demo is the uh we matt played it three times i played it twice what they say for voice acting in each one of them like while you're just kind of dicking around is different each time and one of the times after i killed an enemy barrow went it's another really cool thing that they have the kind of dynamic voice clips and it's it seems like you know obviously he does it when you win fights and then there was another part where i entered the reactor and like he you know barrett was like oh man what would happen if you fell in there so it seems like it's not just they're saying random stuff they're actually saying stuff based on if you were just in a fight or where the environment is so it's kind of cool that they're it's and and it's also stuff that doesn't trigger necessarily every time so i'm assuming they'll be like voice clips that we'll all hear that the other ones won't hear which is also pretty cool because they'll be like oh hey did you hear him say that and he's like no but he said this it's just kind of like completely a little different every time you play which is nice oh yeah yeah he seemed like he was reacting to certain things if i if i was taking my time he'd be like hurry up you know like ex soldier boy or whatever it is kind of funny because he reminds me of uh, i don't know if either of you have played the first gears of war but he reminds me of coltrane um yeah i did play that i, ca- I kind of played the first few hours of gears of war yeah you had that month. guy i was like whoa like yeah. it's like all right <laughs> um, he's so abrasive <laughs> yeah he is i forgot what i was gonna say I'm did so you guys sorry. see this butterfingers promotion that they're having for final oh. fantasy 7 this uh, I have goddamn a thing for right here. promotion oh yeah i have. thought i heard something i thought it was a joke so I, yeah we saw it at pax and we were like what the hell is butterfingers doing with uh um andy got free butterfingers so he was pretty happy about it yeah they were at the booth and then like there was this little clip uh um cards that they gave us and it, it's it's on their twitter too it's not like a big pack secret where you have to buy i haven't done it yet so there's five tiers of rewards and you have to buy for every two uh either butterfingers crush crunch or baby ruth that you buy you get the next tier so presumably you would have to buy 10 candy bars if you wanted to get all of the prizes which you did which i've i did i did 
it started at noon on Tuesday. I, I by twelve oh five, I had my uh, ten candy bars bought. You have to uh, take a picture of your receipt and send it into the to the like Butterfinger FF Seven remake I should website. Do that tonight. Yeah, and then you'll. I got a code for like a, a Tifa dynamic PS4 theme, and then there's gonna be like five in-game items that you get. So it's we're not even sure what they all are. So they're like different kind of. It looks like bangles and like um, different kind of accessories and equipment that you can unlock. And my only real question is like, we don't know if these are things that you can only get through this promotion, or if it's just like things that you get in the game, but you're gonna get it a little early if you do this promotion. I, mean, I like Butterfinger, so I'm fine with it. I like Nestle Crunch, so we're See, good. The thing is, I have to do it just because like, if there's like an item that's only locked behind this dumb promotion, I'm gonna. I don't need tell it. the developers that. Yeah. Don't tell them that. I'm surprised you're not more of a Baby Ruth man. Why? But I was wondering, it's like, a baseball thing. I'm surprised. Like I, I don't know. Because it if has there was... the name of a baseball player. It doesn't mean I automatically like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked Gamer yeah. Fuel because Master Chief was on the can. Also, it was pretty good. Yeah, it does. It does seem kind of dirty that they're like making people buy like ten to fifteen dollars worth of. Oh, I don't bars. agree with it. Yeah, it's kind of obnoxious. I'm doing it. Though. Yeah, exactly. Like I was wondering if like oh would there be like kind of a shortage of Butterfingers or anything? Because like you'll you'll have kids going to the stores and buying ten each like. Stores don't sell, I would think it's not their hottest item that they would sell a bunch of baby roofs all of a sudden. So I just think it's interesting as like a store owner in like a like a younger demographic area, if they just like in, in a college town seeing a bunch of like candy bars randomly disappearing, they're like, Why are we selling out of all these crunch bars all of a sudden? Who the hell buys crunch bars? So when Who you, still eats crunch you bars? Who buys ten of, crunch bars you, at a time? You take a picture of the receipt or something? You have to take a picture of the receipt and then scan it in and send it uh, send it to the uh, email the through the website. And they'll send you like an email. Like they sent it to me like six hours later, saying you got approved. Here's uh, you, here's your code for your theme, and you'll get your code for your five items later on. So it seems like yeah, it does seem like a strange way to do it. Like it's kind of confusing. Another really weird thing about it is if you read in the oh uh, wait a minute, I if see you read, the items that yeah, you get. Yeah. So, but they don't tell you that really what they do. But there's an interesting thing you'll probably see it right there is there's only a certain number of these codes they're giving out. So oh, even, even you, though they could make an infinite amount of them, they're kind of artificially limiting them. So like the first tier, there's only 100,000 items. And then the very last tier, there's only 25,000 items. So, you know, this is a very big popular game. I know not everyone's going to do this dumb candy bar thing. Yeah, but, but not only a that. lot of people are. If this is going to sell, you know, 10, 10 plus million copies, I'm surprised that they're limiting it to like 25,000 people are going to get that last item. So yeah, this is a thing where... You know, the funny thing is, I think the, the, the deluxe edition comes with this. Some of it? Yeah, I think it does. Because I'm pretty sure the deluxe edition says like you get five in game in game items. So well, the deluxe edition gives you like the carbuncle summon and the the like uh, like another summon. Oh, so that reminds know, me. I think it's different. Not all the same stuff. Um, but because it says two dollars each, so I'm like, that's also a bad thing. Because I'm like, because I guess at some point later you can purchase summons, like new ones for like two three dollars a piece. I've heard that as well. From Final Fantasy Seven, from no, the PlayStation no, Store. From where? PlayStation Store. Like they they added new summons, but you have to pay for them extra. But then again, you're getting the super duper deluxe, so I'm sure you're going to get everything. I'm getting the deluxe version. Yeah, which, I haven't heard anything like that. But um, um, yeah, I'm just surprised that they're like kind they're of actually available on the store now. No, they will be when the game comes out. I'm, so where are you hearing that from? I'm just wondering. I I read an article about it that said they were. They were uh, going to release like special summons and stuff like that. I'm, maybe if it's DLC later, maybe I misread it, but I I heard that they were going to do stuff like that. So uh, Andy officially today got charged $346.98 from the Square Enix store. Nice. So my they did it a month a, before? They told me they were, though. I think they wanted to make sure like, hey, we're, we're giving you a heads up. They gave me a heads up like two months ago that they were going to charge me this month. And it's like, hey, we're just we're gonna charge if you want to change anything about your order. I think it's because they just want to know how many they need to send out beforehand. Mm. Um, because if anybody canceled or anything like that, that's one less unit they would make, or I don't know what they would do. But yeah, yeah so I mean, this, they let me know ahead of time, so it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, this uh, so this concept started on March third, and it started at like noon, and it's going on for about two months. But again, because of that kind of limited quantity of things, I'm just kind of curious if there's gonna be like a shortage if. If this is maybe I'm probably overthinking it. Maybe it is just a dumb thing where you get these items in game and it's not really worth the money or time or hassle. But just because they've been so vague about what these items are, like if you can only get them through there, I just like it just seems kind of annoying that they have this kind of artificial limiting of uh, how many they're going to release. Um, no, it'll it'll it's 
interesting what they're doing, but I just hope it's not a, a perfect excuse to break up a few game like pieces and sell them separately for. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about being able to like individually buy summons or anything. That would be kind of a bummer. Um, it's kind of, it's already kind of a bummer that there's you know a couple extra summons in the deluxe edition that you can get. Um, I just assumed that was stuff that you were getting earlier than people that were playing the game. Um, but I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Hopefully they don't monetize too much about this game because I think they know that this is like the one game where I'll just be like, this is so stupid, and then I'll buy every dumb little thing in it. Um, so I'm sure that's something they're thinking about doing. But Did anything else happen this past week at all? I feel like Final Fantasy VII, like we talked about PAX, but besides that, Final Fantasy VII is the only thing that's been on my mind. Could talk about how bad the gearbox thing was. Oh yeah, there was a gearbox panel at PAX, and it was just kind of super boring. Um, I think it was partly because last year they had the kind of Borderlands Three um, kind of reveal, and it was very exciting. This like new game that was coming out relatively soon. Um, this time they didn't really um, do much. They just had like a one of the so there's a season pass for Borderlands Three. Um, there's supposed to be four DLCs. They've already released one, which was that kind of casino one. And they're releasing the second one. Um, that's kind of the, was their kind of quote unquote big reveal in the um, in the pa- the two hour panel. And it was just like it's going to be uh, like a wedding themed one, which it'll be interesting. It'll be fun, but it's just kind of like it was kind of a bummer. And then selfishly, they usually give out like cool prizes at the Gearbox um, events. Last year we got these interesting um, face masks, um, and then we got like Borderlands one, two, and three. He's you, you say interesting. Uh, you're you're. Friend Feeney was trying to like give his away. <laughs> oh, I would have. I like that mask. Oh, that, oh, I was gonna like snag it for yeah, you because I'm like guy that's I on couldn't the box. remember I if those you are called. wanted Psych- it. Or like they're not. just the psycho masks. Oh, he threw it. He gave it away. I don't know what he did with it, but he was trying to give it away. I'm like, I can't remember if Dan wanted that or not. Yeah, that was one of the. I was I was gonna see if you didn't want yours. I was gonna buy it off. Oh, your maybe butt. if he still has it and doesn't want it, I'll see if I can snag it for you. No, right, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, yeah it's, like the Borderlands mask. It was kind of a bummer. There wasn't a lot of good panels there. I went to a couple. Um, yeah, I was going to go to one. Uh, every panel I wanted to go to kind of interrupted whatever I was doing at the time because um, I was, you know, I was having a lot of fun doing what I normally do, you know, traveling around, looking at the indie games, playing games with friends, playing board games with friends. Um, I bought some new D and D dice. Um, yeah, nothing, think, nothing huge else happened in video game news yeah, though. Besides PAX, it's week. that kind of calm before the storm. In a couple of weeks, it'll be really hitting off. But until then. It's just it's just another like I'm I'm still I'm gonna say this every week. I'm still surprised we don't know anything about PS five. I'm liking um, it. I'm every like, the week the more they wait, the more I like I said, it I'm craving information for it. I mean it's the yeah. idea that it's backwards uh, that the Xbox is backwards compatible all the way down to the original is fantastic. And I like this. It's putting Sony in a in a difficult spot that they need to they need to come up big. So I think you guys are just hardwired differently to me than me when it comes to specifically video game stuff. Because I'm never like, it's like one of those things where the PS5, it's like, yeah, it's coming. Like I'm not for some reason I'm not like, oh my god, I need to know more. Well, about no, it. I don't I, need to know more. I'm, I'm. It, well, it'll you said come. you're craving information though. Well, when it comes out, yeah, I, 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 I want information, but I'm not like, I, I'm not like every day scrolling for it. Uh, but it makes me like interested in what. Um, is potentially it's yeah. gonna have like you because you get that information from Xbox right now and you're saying okay Sony needs to to counter and if they they don't yeah. it, Sony's gonna counter with we will have exclusives in the first year <laughs> well I'm pretty curious about what it's gonna be and I feel like part of the problem for me is I feel like there was this benchmark set obviously they're not obligated to follow it but just because the PS4 was announced they announced the first meeting in the early February of um, 2013 and then by February 20th that's when they had their kind of a big reveal event so I'm in the back of my head thinking okay the system's going to come out in November it's going to come out kind of the same time around the PS4 um, they kind of do the same thing with all these systems um, so February would be kind of a good make sense time for them to kind of at least announce when they're going to talk about this and now that we're into kind of the first week of March and we still haven't, still haven't even heard when they're going to do this um, release it almost makes you think okay are they going to do it in March April or are they going to wait till after um, Xbox gets done with uh, E3 do you guys think that they're all of them are really starting to worry about this whole supply chain issue because of what's going on in China right now do you think that has Could anything be. to do with Absolutely. it? Absolutely um, I, mean, I know we already kind of talked started, about this but it now started I'm, in December 
So I really don't think so. I feel like they would move like heaven on earth to get this thing out for this year. Like it would be kind of such a debacle if they've been talking about it for so long. Build the things for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, I mean, that's, if there's really no one to build it, that would be an issue. But I don't think it's going to be as big of an issue as people think. Like, there's definitely been interruptions, but kind of it seems like they a lot of, you know, places have been able... You know, a lot of those systems that were made for um, November of 2013, they were built, like, in September. Like, it wasn't like they needed... They don't need as much lo- lo- uh, run-up time as pe- I think people think they need. Um, the only problem would be is if, you know, Apple needs parts for phones and like there's kind of a backlog of companies that are all asking for this um but if they have enough time as long as this doesn't get worse in the next couple of months i don't think it'll be you know this oh man they're gonna have to move it into 2021 issue that people think yeah the only thing i'm actually surprised about like if i was to pick one thing i was surprised about is we just don't know what the ps5 looks like like i feel like like we have that prototype image that i'm in the minority and i actually think it looks pretty neat <laughs> but um other than that like i <sighs> I'm also, like, somehow a bit curious if Xbox is really keeping that design we saw anyways, or if that was just oh, kind absolutely. of a placeholder. Oh, yeah, God, they, keep, looks... they keep showing advertisements with it. Ugh, I mean, so yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look great. That's... It looks horrible. But again, doesn't I, know, fit. I, doesn't fit. I know that's a big thing, but if you think about it later, it, I never really look at the system anymore. It's neat when it first comes out. And just like the name, the name of the system, Xbox One, we all laugh when it first came out. That's so dumb. Like, Xbox One, really? Okay. Series X is dumb. Like, how do, what do we even call this? The next you, Xbox? you say that now, but do you know that ever since I've gotten my Xbox One, that daily, I'll just look, even if I'm not using it, I'll look at it and be like, that is a sleek looking piece of hardware. Just like the contour. This is coming from also an artistic minded oh, person okay. I, mean, I mean that might be it yeah i'm not sure well i think the bigger issue for me is that thing doesn't fit in my entertainment system nicely like i have yeah. i have these it little spots that are, as hell i will I give these, you that I I, i'm less. more talking from a design perspective it's not designed for an entertainment center like every other video game system is yeah so i think i'm you know i'm not gonna be the only one with that problem where i have these special slots that kind of fit like a vcr or a video game console so it's like i'm gonna have to <laughs> you can split it in half like it's too yeah i'm gonna have something. to put it like i don't know behind my entertain <laughs> it's gonna be so i'm gonna have to break something it's just gonna have to be really weird it has and like a little, one of those little hooks you can hang it on the wall xbox gonna and microsoft's gonna get into furniture <laughs> it's gonna, secretly it's like oh buy our special the couch <laughs> series x <laughs> yeah it's like am i gonna have to put it in the floor yeah. like in front of my entertainment system I, it's I, gonna look so gaudy i, I don't think i want to hire microsoft to name things my god Microsoft yeah, what do we call that? We're just gonna have to be call like, this name the, the Series Xbox X. Xbox Series, Series XX. Like PS5 is okay. quick, you know what it is. Xbox Series X is like this long. I honestly didn't dumb think the thing. PS- well, Series X is I, this one's trying to go back and take the name Xbox. Are they? It's, I have no idea what they're well, doing. Series X is the it, yeah. What does that like mean? Sub, it's the type of that style it's probably that each one is going to have its own so, thing do you think they're playstation gonna have a, 4 pro so do you think they're gonna have four, a new um sorry. sorry do you think they're gonna have like a new name when they actually get like the final model They'll be like okay this is the, no i think this that'll is the be, xbox if L, they really want to go back like, to the original thing they would have just called it the xbox that would be going to the original name this is saying series x and not explaining what it is really we have it's a series but we only have a picture of one specific system. What what are you doing? They haven't explained anything yet. They've only talked about one well, because system. I think what, especially online, I noticed that the original Xbox is known as you know Xbox OG or OG Xbox, and Ugh. then Xbox One is known as Xbox One. And the only reason that the original Xbox has the OG is because they decided to name this past one Xbox One. Exactly. So <laughs> people just uh, like, especially like sellers and stuff that you know they just call it the Xbox Two. I would understand that. <laughs> At least it comes after one. Series X, I don't know what that means. It sounds stupid. It, I don't even like saying it. Oh, man. I'm getting really heated about you this. You are getting heated. I guess we'll have to kind also, of wait and see. Also, possibly unpopular opinion. I didn't think the PS4 looked all that great from a design perspective. It was just it's like, like a trapezoid. It's like a monolith. I think it was really obnoxious when you were trying to plug stuff into the back. Oh, my it's God. Like, yeah, it's yeah, all like, like, I'm hitting to, the lip, damn it. Cause, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's got that con. It like kind of goes inward, and it's really hard to get like plugs in there. So yeah. It's kind of annoying. Yes. And the, the kind of reset and power buttons, when you're not using your controller, those can be kind of finicky. Yes. Where like they're, they don't really These have any really tactile weird, feel. Thin. And it's like, did it work? Did yeah, it not work? They are so successful that we forget to call them out on these things. <laughs> and their battery on the controller. Oh, suck. yeah. But how about giving me a controller without an LED light and a microphone? Or at least turn it off. <laughs> yeah, I can so, dim it. Dim it, turn off the crawl. mic. 
their, head, their headset has a similar problem. These are all questions we would have answered really? if they would just have a stupid meeting about the PS5. I just want to know what it looks like. Do you really think that maybe... The, I mean, they pulled out of this this, this convention. Pax, GDC. Do you really think that maybe this well, is a little bit of it? That, that Everybody it's... pulled out of GDC. Everyone. Sony pulled out of just PAX. Everyone pulled out of GDC. So it, it's... To me, it kind of signifies... Sony didn't pull out of PAX because of this whole, like, we're worried about PS5 stuff. This has more to do with the virus than anything. E3 is still on schedule, so hopefully by that time, this will, will have been over this hump of whatever this is. That that was it. That was the thought. Yeah, I don't know. Well, the whole. Well, thing. you all stopped and looked at me as if I was supposed to say more, and I didn't have anything, and I started panicking because <laughs> no, I didn't know if I was supposed to come up with a new one. Like originally, like my wife laughed at me when she was like, "Oh, this, you know, well, oh, this will be fine." And then, like a week later, it's all over the freaking news, and it's affecting everything. It's affecting, you know, I didn't even the think news, about it. News is just like a giant panic machine, though. That's... No, I understand. I understand that, but it, the more I think about it, the more it actually does affect a lot of things that can definitely delay. You know, video games or or um, like like Andy was talking about manufacturing. So I didn't realize how important China is to, you know, the video game industry. I, I didn't to everything to everything. I mean, every manufacturing you realize thing. like, holy crap, like, <laughs> like China is like a hub of, you know, everyone needs to go there in order to successfully keep their company alive. So, um uh, Andy, what are you doing to the stuffed animal? No, I was seeing where Squirtle was made. He was made in China. What Everyone shocked. was made in it China. Was, it I took know. a while, though. It's like this little, little tiny tag. I have Squirtle here for everybody who I, wanted to know. I'm touting about my stuffed animal as a 31-year-old man. I don't know why I I, found, I thought of this, but that, that part where in Toy Story where Woody like, lifts his leg, <laughs> I just picture made in China. Look at the pop. <laughs> I don't know um, why I thought that. Also, I want to bring this up because this is actually uh, big news. Uh, Matt has a nemesis now. Oh, my God. Um, we were at PAX East, and Matt and I were walking down the hallway. And Matt, make, Matt made a pretty, not really funny, but just nope. funny. Like, funny and like, ah, ha, ha. It was not, funny because it, it wasn't funny. Yeah, that was mostly it. it was actually, funny. yeah. No, no, it, it was funny because it wasn't funny. So I was drinking a coffee, and I started choking on it. Well, it went down the wrong tube. I start coughing, and Matt's like, you know, in a very sarcastic way, like, oh, no, Andy's getting the coronavirus. Andy, it's day one. You can't do that yet. <laughs> and this woman, like, behind us and to the right was like, that's not very funny. Yeah, people are the worst. Sure, very, I something. couldn't tell if she said it because she was offended or because she really didn't think Matt's joke was funny. No, I think she was just like, no, she's just one of these, I want like, to be offended. Yeah, I she's like, like the, oh, trying to like. She just sounds like an awful person. To be she's like. woke. Yeah, she was trying to. <laughs> she sounded very woke. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, she did we're, not we're sound not, like. We're not talking about this anymore. Yes. I don't want to talk I about this. I would have clapped for you, Matt. That was oh, a good one. <laughs> one other thing is I kept the stub to my um, Final yes, Fantasy VII. That. Um, oh, I'm actually, I'm already making a Zelda frame for that other thing. I think I might make an FF7 frame with all this stuff I'm getting, like the Shinra card and this and that. So and you could thing. do some cool stuff is actually from the demo. Like shadow box. You could do, um, take a screenshot of some part in the demo that you loved and you could find a way to print that out and then show like that underneath. Why well, have the poster. Well, yeah, but wouldn't it be even better to have your... Like part of the demo, like a screenshot of well, your demo. Yeah, maybe if something strikes me as much. I did take a lot of screenshots of Breath of the Wild yeah. that I thought were pretty. But um, the uh, the the time stub we had from um, the FF7 demo, um, we got to keep. It's kind of like a movie ticket. You got to keep half of it, and it says a uh, Shinra Electric Power Company, and it says it has a quote: "Shinra, we work hard so you can live well." And it's just they're just kind of sweet. Yeah, um, I'm actually warming up I have on two Shinra. Of these, so if I find the other one, I'll give that to you, Dan. Do, uh, like, Matt, do you have one? Uh, I think I tossed mine. Do you not want it? I, like uh, literally in the trash? Yeah, it's gone. It's long gone. <laughs> it doesn't hold on to anything. <laughs> oh, it's a great game. So. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Matt holds on to a lot of crap. I'm actually kudos for throwing it out. Like physical <laughs> stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Not video games for long. No, but, apparently like it know, has to be in his top like, busted through 5%. Busted pans and... What? I, I, have, I, don't, I keep my video games. I have a giant... That is true. He has a huge closet from like no, but every you've, you've been pretty good about like, hey, if I'm not going to play this again, I'll 
sell it and try to make my money back. That's yeah, like I do that with new games that I'm not like in love with. Like I'll probably buy Doom and then beat it in a week and then sell it back. I, did you keep Death Stranding or did you sell it? I sold it. Oh, you kept the original the 2016 Doom. Did I? Yeah, I thought That's one did. of those games. It's, yeah, it's got a that. lot of replayability. Yeah, that one's that one's that one's really good. Yes. I guess we'll see. Doom Eternal. In two weeks. Animal Crossing in two weeks. Resident Evil three in three weeks. Yes, I can't believe I just Resident at Evil that. three weeks. Yep. And with that, this is the Trophy Hunter. Oh no! Wait, where can people find you? <laughs> <laughs> you can find me, Trophy Hunter. Where can people find you? You can find me at Good segue, Andy. Uh, uh, on Twitter, Matt Talks Games. You can find me there and say hi, and I'll say hi to you. It'll be great. Danny Boyo. Uh, you People can find, find me on Twitter at Game Review Guy. And you can find me, Andy, at Highly and Andy on Twitter. You can find the podcast at Mana Bar Podcast on Twitter. And you can find it on Instagram at The Mana Bar Podcast. Also, check out our YouTube channel for all that content that I keep promising will be on there and never is. And if you have any recommendations of co op games you want us to play together, let us know. Or don't. So Andy has his Tuesdays to himself again? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with that. Finally, this is the Trophy Hunter, the Collector, and the Value Gamer logging off. <laughs>